The Roto Brush is new to After Effects CS5, and it's going to be the best friend of all you guys out there whose job it is to rotoscope things. And for those of you who are brand new to After Effects, rotoscoping is when someone takes some of the masking tools, like a pen tool, for example, and they have to carefully, frame by frame, remove things. For example, an actor is in the scene and there's a boom mic hanging over here or someone's hand or their head is sticking over here. You want to remove that so the director and the film crew and everybody don't have to spend millions of dollars reshooting a scene just because someone couldn't move their big head out of the shot. So you just have to painstakingly remove it. Well, this tool here is going to really change how you work with After Effects. Now, even though it's pretty much automated, you still have to do a little bit of work on your end. And there's a couple of things to keep in mind. One, you have to be in a layer to use it. As you can see here, I have it pressed in. And when I move my mouse in the comp, I don't see the tool. So what I have to do is double click on my source and open it in its own layer. And you'll know now because your tool shows up. I'll go back to the composition, not there. I'll go back to the layer and the tool shows up. The second thing you have to be aware of is for the best results for this tool, make sure you're at 100%. So I'm going to go to my magnification and I'm going to go to 100%. If I need more room, I can always move some of these panels out of the way like so. The next thing you have to do is you have to bring your mouse into position and of course see how it compares to the footage that you're trying to roto. For example, if you want to resize your brush, hold down command or control and then drag your mouse left or right on your uh, desk or your Wacom tablet and you can change the size of the brush. Now this size is way too big to of course paint over Godzilla. So I'm going to reduce the size of the brush until it looks like it's about the right size. Now the way the tool works is it allows me to very sloppily go like this and look what happens. We get this purple outline that appears. This outline is the area that you would have normally painstakingly created with the pen tool for example. But you'll notice that as I mentioned before it's not perfect. What it does is it looks for contrast and it looks for things that aren't the same. And it tries to automatically trace things. So if you're not getting an accurate first attempt, you can undo it and resize your brush a little bit and try again. So I'm going to go ahead and resize my brush and give it a little help. So I'll do something like this. And you notice that I don't have to be exact either. I can do something like this and let go. Now that's much better, but I still have to help it out some more. So I'm going to click and grab this claw and this one. And you notice that it's grabbing too much. So how do we get rid of that? Well, in this case, we have to hold down the Alt or Option key and then we get a red cursor and we can click and drag out the portions we don't want like so. So as I said before, it's a revolutionary tool, but you still have to have the human element, your own eye and expertise to get the tool to work the way you want it to work. So as you can see here in Godzilla's little tail fins here or back fins, there's too much and I'll go ahead and once again get rid of those guys and add more and I have to finesse it and I kinda like that because computers are great but we still have to put our own eye into a lot of things okay so I'm gonna go ahead and just zoom in or rather add a little bit more and that looks pretty good to me so what has happened so far well let's go back to our comp as you can see that background is gone and the areas that are covered in this color here, magenta, are the areas that have been masked out by this tool. So what, what I suggest you guys do is spend the quality time you need to get the best mask that you can so you'll have less work to do later on. Don't forget, always resize your brush if you need to so you can go ahead and really finesse it and get the result you want. Let's go ahead and continue talking about how to use this tool in the next part.